taking that so far. When you want something real and to have a good time, put a smile on your face, yeah, can't be caring. Elation Radio, mm-hmm. even brighten your day. Sitting back thinking today, like, wow, what are we going to do? 
I've been following some of today's current events, and I don't know. I, I I've not uh, I have not been satisfied, you know. And I hate to say it like that, but man, there's a lot going on in the world, and it's not pretty. So, um, I just wow. I want to go on a rant right now, but I'm not. Um, I want to say I've been I've been just ch- keeping up with current events. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, I've looked at everything from our stock market to the killing of a uh, a baby in Chicago. Um, well, I shouldn't say baby, a youth, a very young man who was only 13. I have studied my word, uh, looking to Christ to, you know, give me the strength to keep going. As a matter of fact, not even the strength. Give me a reason to keep going in this direction, God. You know, I said I, I prayed that the other day, and with every single thing that's going on, I, I still try to pray uh, for our adversaries. I feel guilty when I don't include them in my prayers, but 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 I feel even more guilty when I don't support the ones who need the support. You know, people. If one of us is oppressed then all of us are oppressed. Um, I truly believe in that. And uh, so with that being said, I just I wanted to welcome in my two partners in crime. Uh, uh, Jason, Jason, you on with us tonight. Yeah, I'm here, man. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. And Terry, are you here with us tonight? Yes, sir. How are you doing? Uh uh, doing good. How about you two gentlemen? It's 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 been something. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it, 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 something. And one of the scriptures that stands out in my mind, and and I tell y'all what, if I'm standing around, I can never remember these things. But for some reason, when when we are here, it just I need it. And it says, uh, 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 "Who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God." And uh, that's out of Isaiah 50, but. Uh, um, man, that that's what I'm talking about. What we're going through right now, and uh, you know, I kind of want to talk a little bit about. It. I know um, that 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 Jason, you had a topic you wanted to speak about, and you know, let uh, let's let's talk about it. Let's let's wrap about it because you know, relentless pursuit. You know, we we are all pursuing something in life, and we have to be relentless in our pursuits. And I don't. It doesn't matter what it is. We have to just be unchanging, unbending, chasing, and going after that pursuit. So, with that being said, um, uh, J Dub, you. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, kind of a piggyback off what you were saying. It, it, it has been a tough week. Um, you know, with just all the, you know, the political unrest, and then with in one week two different. You know, just incidents with police officers, and it's yeah. just it, it it is tough. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, you're not. I don't think you're the only one feeling this. I, I think, you know, uh, everybody in the in the in the, in the black community is feeling this because at some point in time, you ask, when does this end, <laughs> right? You know, we got a trial going on, and in the midst of the trial, we had two and almost three just. It, oh no! It, it is a, it's a it's a tough road, you know. And yeah. I, I think as I was going through this week, and you know, I I was kind of trying to stay up to date with everything. And you know, um, I listened to various you know news outlets, and the biggest thing that popped out to me was to hear them talk, to hear the the narratives that are coming out from these various news outlets, and and ultimately mm-hmm. to walk around and say. Where, how do I find truth, right? And what is truth? And then how do I, how do I find it in in in, in the environment that we're in today? And um, it just it 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 almost saddened me even more to 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 think that I'm here I am in one of the in the probably the apex or our technological advancement, and I can't even find something as simple as truth, right? You know, um, and it, it was it was difficult because, like I said, as I listened to the various narratives, you know, um, especially around the George Floyd case, you 
if someone was not up to speed or, or really fully in the know or even just coming in off the off the cuff, you would think they're talking about two totally different trials, right? And 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 it's a struggle yeah. because you know we 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 have these these groups of people that we want to trust our, our news outlets, right? And 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 we want to we we they have a. a and you listen to any journalist, they'll tell you, well, my job is so important because I, I, I am the person that informs the community and, and brings everybody information and knowledge. But at the same time, you know, when we sit here and we take a step back and look at the information and knowledge that they're bringing, and you're like, what's going on? You know, so, you know, for me, you know, like I said, that 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 was my particular struggle, you know, and and, and just kind of want to put it out there for you guys. I mean, have y'all ever had that struggle where, you know, you hear a narrative on one side and you actually know uh, some information and you're looking at that and like, how do you bring your mouth to even say something like that, you know, and and and, and then just to challenge that, you know, that like I said, that pursuit of truth. Hmm. Uh. Wow, the pursuit yeah, of truth. Yeah, I mean, I, I per- okay, and I, the pursuit of truth. And I guess the thing is, you gotta. Are you talking about the truth of God's word? Are you talking about the truth? Because truth is 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 measured against whatever it is. Like if it's if you're measuring it against the word of God, that's the, you know you're looking for truth there. If you're looking for the truth in the law, you're measuring it against the law. So you got to ask yourself, what are you measuring it against? You know what I'm saying? And especially what's going on with uh, George Floyd and all those things right now. And like I said, the other incidents with the, with the, uh, with the military uh, man that was pepper sprayed and, and then the, uh, the young man that was shot. And then you got the, uh, the 13-year-old that was shot. Uh, you got to ask yourself, where, the truth, honestly, the truth that, that, that the world looks at is it's the, it's the, it should be it's measured against the law. And what's happening is, rather than the people that are that that committed these these heinous acts being judged like they should, mm-hmm. and but what's happening is now the person that was the victim is now being put on trial. Does that make sense? And so what it is, it, it, it's making the 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 truth of the law it's skewing it, in a sense. If I can, if I can make yeah. this victim look bad, that's going to justify what I do. You know, and honestly, mm-hmm. that, and if you want to relate that over to Word of God, that happens within the Word of with the Word of God. If I can make someone else look bad or worse than me, then yeah. this right, doesn't apply to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. If I can make yeah. If I can make if I if I can make this if I can make this if I can make this prostitute that's in the you know this girl that sleeps around in the church look worse than me or this homosexual look worse than me then it diverts the attention off of me and puts it on them and so therefore the truth is really skewed but understand the truth of God's word is for everybody just like the law is supposed to be for everybody and yeah. and that's an interesting point you bring up Terry oh go ahead Cedric no no you go ahead. Keep going. No, no, no. So, so it's an interesting point you bring up, and here's here's the challenge I have. You know, you would think, and this this is what this is what really broke my heart. You would think when we talk about truth, you know, the body of Christ, the church, we would not even struggle in this matter. But as we as 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 we as we are as we sit here in 2021, and we've got a new presidential administration, I, I'm still reading articles about people of faith, you know, people who are supposedly part of the body of Christ and how they reflected against the past administration and, 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 and not just, it, it, it was, it's not the support of the past administration. It, it's the skewing when they say something like, well, you know, he was given to us by God. He's, it's like, what, you know? So, when we talk about truth, you're right. It is depending on where you're coming from, but the, but that's even that that brings even more sadness to me because even when you look in areas where the truth should be absolute, should be just there should be no doubt of what the truth is, there's still a struggle, right? And, and that struggle mm. is is not just you know I would love for the struggle to be like well you're you're a new Christian versus an old Christian, right? Because at least with there, I can say that struggle can be overcome with with, a, with some time and some training. But 
what you typically see that struggle in the truth mirrors the same struggle in the truth when we see in our own communities. So I, you are absolutely correct that, you know, when we talk about truth, we got to talk about where we're talking about truth coming from. But that's even sadder for me because even in the body of Christ, we can't get on the same page and say, what's our truth, right? And, you know, and look and look at this pandemic. I read an article about uh, a pastor leading his congregation telling them not to take the vaccine and, 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 and you know, and, 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 and saying all these things. And I'm like, man, this is – it's just a difficult time, you know, and especially, you know, like I said, as, as me as a believer who I, like I said, I, I know what the truth is. And, and, I, and it's something I seek every day to understand God's truth in every such situation and circumstance and to look around and not only to see the world struggling with truth, but to see the body struggling with, with truth, too. Well, yeah, um, when, I, when I think of the truth, when we, when we throw in uh, – when we throw in our Christian brothers and sisters, um, I'll be honest. You know, one of the things I learned about truth, and, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, one of the things I learned about truth growing up was your truth is relative. <laughs> it, it, it is relative to what it is you're talking about. I, I tell you, the problem I have right now, and the struggle that I have, and again, uh, uh, we mentioned the 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 – we always say the George Floyd trial, but 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 I say his name just to honor him. But we know that it's Chauvin that's on trial. Derek Chauvin is the one that's on trial, and, and I listen to his defense attorney. Why is it? Why is it that that as 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 black men we get a destiny, right right there on the spot? They are judge and jury, and then uh, when they are finally, if ever, brought to court. Not only have we been murdered, killed, then they start to murder our reputation, and then they 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 want to say, well, like like in the case of George Floyd, the truth, the truth, the truth is we all know he died because of the interaction of the police, but they want to put this narrative out there that no, he uh he died because of a uh. uh Exhaust from a tailpipe, really? So he fell on the ground. He he literally fell for the banana in the tailpipe thing, right? I mean, who does that? And 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 for people, and and, and I say as Christians, and for people to believe in this narrative, like I've heard and, and read some articles, but I've heard people go on talk shows or call into talk shows, and they believe that it wasn't the officer's fault. Oh, why aren't we holding? certain people accountable. So yeah, that's where I'm going to go with this whole discussion. I'm sorry. I apologize. But why aren't we holding people accountable? You know, just because you put on a badge and a gun and you say, and I'm going to tell you something, our police departments have turned out to be the most cowardly people that I know. And I'm going to tell you why. Because every time they do something, here's what they say. I was afraid for my life. And they get off the hook, right? I was afraid for my life. Then why are you wearing a uniform? Why are you wearing a uniform? When you sign your dotted your, your your name on the dotted line when you join the U.S. military, they don't ask you if you're scared. If your turn to get deployed, it's your turn. You get deployed. You can be a conscientious objector. I'm not saying that there's not a few of them out there, but then you don't go to war, right? You don't have to. You don't get to wear the uniform anymore. You know, you don't get to go. And but but these police officers know very well what their job entails every day. Why do we have so much hate out of our police departments? So when I start talking about truth, let's talk about truth. I know, and that's a good point. And, and, and you know, you know, um, just to go back to that's that's another struggle I have. I was reading about that particular part of the uh, Derek Chauvin case, and how um, when when the defense got up there, they put somebody up there to say, "Hey, you know what, you know." It could have been physical exhaust, but here's the part that threw me off. The prosecution has already did the blood test and the blood work, and they can conclusively say that wasn't part of – that didn't cause it, but the judge won't allow it because of some standard that they have when we talk about uh, trials. And I'm thinking to myself, what are we – I mean, just look at that system, you know. This person can get on the on, on the stand after swearing on the Bible to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and put out a narrative that could 
may be true, may not be true, and there's an opportunity to say, okay, no, that's not the case, because we did the blood test. And let us tell you, if there was an exhaust fish situation, if, if he died from the from a human exhaust, this is what his blood, this is what his alcohol, this is what his oxygen level would look like. And his oxygen level was not it was not conducive to say it was exhaust that killed him, right? So there's an opportunity mm-hmm. to to bring truth to this trial, but because of this system of of this legal system that we have, disclosure. it doesn't even allow disclosure. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, the, and, and, the disclosure. And, 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 and that and that's that that's my struggle. It's like every place you look, when we talk about truth, do we really want truth? As, a, as a, you know, is our system set up to really look for and find truth? Now, to go back to what you said about these officers, I'm like you, Cedric. How are you going to tell me you're afraid for your life, and and because you're in fear of your life, you get to take somebody else's life? I don't think as a private citizen, I can get away with that to the point where they're doing it, right? You know, I would expect yeah. that from a private citizen. I haven't been trained. I haven't gone through rigorous uh, physical training, mental training, psychological training. I haven't gone through any of that. So for me to encounter a situation, you know, that, that may be tense and may be, you know, even could be uh, a, uh, a scary, right? My natural response, mm-hmm. because I don't have experience with it, should it may, may, may put me in a level of fear that I don't have. You are a cop, and if you tell me you've been on the cop for 20, 30 years, you've come across that, right? So your level of fear should not be the same. It's almost like they, they get they get to say, I was scared, and get away with things a lot more than the average person does. So when you talk about and accountability, it you know, it goes back to this system, you know, where these people can hear these things. You know, I don't know how people sit in a courtroom and say, well, the cop said he was afraid, so it was good. It, he's okay for what he did. I mean, like, no, he's a cop. You know, he's not brand mm-hmm. new off the force. And, you know, so, but, you know, not, that's a really good point. When you talk about accountability, but the problem is, you know, when we talk about accountability, it, 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 I don't know. It, when, when we have trials like this, I, I think what we start to see is some underpinnings and some the underbelly and the ugliness within people of our community, right? When you have a jury of 12 yeah. folks who can look at a trial and get told some random stuff like exhaust, it's almost like they're looking for a reason to let the cop go, right? So any little thing they look for, instead of saying, okay, let, let me make sure, you know, let me make, let me bring justice. You know, what is the truth about this situation? And if anybody takes a step back and really looks at the truth of the situation, I, I think you'll look at it differently, you know? You know, when well, you look at the truth what, of – yeah, go that's, ahead. That's what was being said earlier. That's what was being said earlier, Jason, as far as um, being able to – the hope is that these jurors will just look at the evidence and not – and the evidence of even like seeing the video – and not not go for the the what they call window dressing of the defense and this that you know to to fall for that. But one of the things that I think I want to address something that Cedric said earlier is about. I was listening to uh, Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp said something about he said the people are he people he said he said you're afraid of my skin color. You're afraid of you got you got these preconceived notions about the way I look. Uh, uh, that I'm overly sexed, that I am, um, I have anger issues. I've got all these different. I'm a drug head. I'm a whatever. But he said, but one of the then he said something that was really significant, and I want to drag. And I, and he said this. He said, those of you who say that you have white friends and don't feel any empathy, you don't have a friend. You have, you just know a black person. That's all you do. You don't, you just know a black person. You don't you don't because mm-hmm. everybody. Oh, mean, yeah, Shannon Sharp. What he said. What he said. What he said uh, to Skip Bayless. He said. He literally said that, and I was like, wow, that's deep. He said because if you're connected to me and you know me, and right. and you're a white and and you're and you're and, and and you're my friend and you're a white person, you should be feeling some empathy right about now. And if you don't, that's right. You're not my friend. You just know me. That's all it is. You just don't know me. You just know. You just know me. You don't. No. And that's it. And so I say that to say, is that 
all this whole thing that we're dealing with right now is we're dealing with a whole lot of issues as far as we're dealing with uh, uh, preconceived notions, implicit bias about the way black men are. You know, they're drug heads, they're this, they're that. We're dealing with all that. And within this case, this whole case has exposed, like you said, Jason, the whole ugly underbelly of of the justice system, the ugly underbelly of 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 the of the of the world right now, the state that we're in right now, and and it's awful. It, it's horrible. And, and, and I tell you, uh, Terry, you suggested I watch a movie uh, uh, a few weeks ago, maybe maybe a couple months, whenever the movie first came out. And the movie was called. <laughs> And if you haven't seen it, man, I'm telling you, go see it. But if, if the movie was called Judas and the Black Messiah. You can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution, right? And that's kind of the subtitle of the movie. But but but, but the point I want to make, in this movie, the way they were talking, there was one scene in the movie that stood out to me, and, and I laughed about it. And, and it was a scene in the movie, and I'm not good with the names of actors, so you got to forgive me. I have to look his name up. But he basically was a car thief, and what he would do is go into a club, pool hall, or an establishment, and he'd flip out his badge, and he'd say he was FBI, and say he was investigating a bunch of car break-ins and uh, a car theft, and the car outside was stolen a few days ago. And then when the guy who owns the car gets up, he makes them, because he flashed the badge, he makes them give him his key, and that's the way he would steal the car. Well, the FBI agent was trying to get him to be, become an informant, in the Black Panther Party, and he said a badge is scarier than a gun. He said anybody on the street can get a gun. I'm not going to use all the expletives he used, but he said anybody on the street can get a gun, but a badge is like you got the whole army behind you. How many of these cops, that's how they act, and they just use their guns, again, to further perpetrate their crimes. They basically do what the slave masters did. Uh, uh, they basically do what they said in that letter, the Willie Lynch letter. If anybody's ever read that, you've ever thought about what slavery was like, but they, they wrote this, this this letter, and it's a fictional little book, but it was based the, the character name is fictional, but based on some sort of reality, right? And what they would do is they would take the strongest buck, and they would beat him and kill him in front of everybody, so it would cause everybody else to be afraid. That, if that's not what's happening with the police departments right now, if that's not what's happening within our system, and then I want to touch on another part, not just harp on that, I want to touch on another part because truth, the, 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 the equality. There's no equality in these lies that we keep telling. And I'm going to tell you why I say this. You say this. These directions, why are they out on bond, out on bail? Why they got this one woman, they call her the bullhorn lady. She walking around, not, not, she, she's out on bond, and the judge specifically put in her in his orders that, hey, you have to abide by the rules. You have to wear a mask. This is specific to her. You have to wear a mask when you're out in public. Why I stick in a in a bookstore with a mask on? They really look like fishnet pantyhose. It's, it's full of holes, and it's not really a mask. And why is she still walking the street? The judge says, okay, you got 10 days to give me a written reply. Oh, yeah, and you too, attorney. I need a reply from you why you told her to throw the mask away. Mm-hmm. Why they get all these chances? Mm-hmm. Oh, better, or better yet, yeah, think about it. Oh, hold on, but think about it. In the, you know, there, a cop died during this during this insurrection during this riot, and I don't. None of them are on on, on charge for any type of capital murder, but let it be. Look, uh, even the two uh, 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 right. Let it let it be let it be someone sitting in a car, not even knowing what the other party is going to do, right? And they go out and they commit a crime. I heard a, I heard a heartbreaking story. I was I, I was driving for Uber a little bit, and this lady got in the car, and we just got to start to talking, and she kind of broke down. I'm like, "What's going on?" She's like, "My 21 year old daughter, you know, and it was it was it was it was, it was a black lady is 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 in is in is in prison for life." I'm like, "What?" And she told me a heartbreaking story. She was dating this guy. He he she didn't even know. She was just in the car. He had stopped by to. Uh, she thought he just stopped by to go to the store. He ended up robbing the store, shooting the uh, the store owner. The store owner died, and they and they and they gave her they gave her because she was there, <laughs> because she was in the car. She didn't even That's go into the store with them. That. Yeah, she she got she got convicted of capital murder, and now she got a life she got a life sentence. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, you know, I'm like, 
And, and, you know, and when you hear stories like that, you hear people say, well, she shouldn't have been with them. I'm like, come on, man. You, you, Come on. You know, so I don't know. You know, when we talk about truth, and, and I, think, I think you said it earlier, people, truth is relative, right? And I think that's part of our mm-hmm. problem is that my truth is relative to me, which makes it relative to my experience, which means that if I don't experience it, then it ain't true. And and until okay. we until we start recognizing that man maybe my truth isn't relative, maybe there's a truth that that goes beyond my own right, you know to your point Terry if you can't feel the pain that I'm feeling if you can't see the truth of my life then we ain't friends right you just you just know me you know so I mean I I think as we talk about these things I think it's 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 just like I said it's just so heartbreaking to know that. You know, I I don't know. I, it just it's just been a hard week, you know. And can I, so, can I say something? I want I want to throw, yeah. I want to throw something in there. And and when and when I sit and I think about our white brothers and sisters that are Christians, and then if you, when I and when especially when I look at the ones who where the where the where there are black people that are attending a pa- church as pastored by a, a white male or a white person, period. I have not seen anybody rise up and say that how of the injustice that's happening to men of color from any of those congregations. And that really yeah. disturbs me because you're supposed to be their pastor. And, it, it, and like I said, it goes back to that whole thing about having that empathy. And so if you're not standing with us, as an ally, empathizing and understanding, you know, saying, hey, this is awful, this is wrong, then all you're doing, and I'm going to say it, is pimping the black folk or being massive to the black folk that go to your church. And because mm. and, and this right here, this is not going to change just by us. We're going to have to have people, other people, in other words, pe- white folk, to join, to rise up, to help make these, to help get these systematic changes that made. You know what I'm saying? We're going to need people to stand up and to really to to go to battle with us doing this because and, this right here can't keep, can't keep going Terry, on. Yeah, yeah, but, but see, Terry, I think I think that's the challenge, you know, because I'll tell you this last administration. Um, I mean, I, I know. Think what you want to think about it. One of the things I appreciated was about this last administration. I had so many talks about race with my Christian, my white Christian brother and sister, right? Where I would have never had that, and it always started the same. Started the same way. Yo, I really didn't know it was that bad for you, right? And and the expectation was supposed to be for me like, man, yeah, it's really been bad, man. Really, thank you for reaching out to me. But my thought was this: it's like, don't. Let's be truthful about it. It's not that you didn't know you chose to ignore. Because I know when I was watching TV, I sat there and watched Rodney King get beat by five different cops just laying on the ground and getting kicked and and beat. I saw that, right? And I, you know, so you can't tell me you didn't know, you know. So what I always challenge those people is, okay, I need for you to go back. And when you saw all these things, what was your mindset? And ask yourself, what was the truth of your mindset? And face that truth because that's how real change is going to happen. Because I can't understand how someone can look at that situation and even think that was deserved, right? There's nothing in my in, in my psyche that allows that to happen, you know. So you've got some you you got an experience that I don't have that you can look at that situation and and, and for some reason feel like it was justified, it was deserved. Um, there wasn't any injustice done, right? And there's a lot of people like you that have that psyche. So you got to come face to face with your own truth. Is that the, you know, and that's, that's why always my challenge with them is like, don't tell me you didn't know, right? You know, tell me that you saw and you chose to ignore because that's the truth, right? You saw this. You saw all these things happen and you chose to ignore. And until you face that truth, we can't get anything fixed, right? And, and so to your point, you know, when we talk about people outside of our community, you know, that's what needs to happen. They need to look at themselves and do that self-evaluation and say, I made this transition, right? In my mind at one point in time, I thought that was okay. But why did I think that's okay, you know? And how do I help my people who still in that place get out of that place? Because we can't help them, 
because I can look at that situation and say there ain't nothing okay about that. So I can't help you. I can't help you understand how that's not okay. And that, and think about that. I mean, and, and y'all tell me how many times have y'all had that conversation, you know, with somebody outside the community, and 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 they we look at the situation and they come all across like it's okay, and and we just sitting here like, how do you even bring yourself to think that's okay? Has that ever happened to you guys? <laughs> I, you know, I had a I had a Christian brother of mine, a friend of mine, and. Yeah, that's happened. And my thing is, <laughs> my, my thing is simple. You know, I work with a guy who is a pastor, and I've had another friend who's a pastor. I, I'm telling you, my, my, my narrative is always simple. I keep it simple. I don't think that. And my personal opinion is the truth. The truth of that is this right here. The truth of that is this right here. It's not that they, they ignore it. It's they can afford. See, they they avoid it so that they don't have to put any brain cells into the picture. They don't have to think about it, right? They don't have to look and say, "Wow, we are horrible people." Why? Because it's hard for people to understand. It's hard for people to admit how horrible they are, how horrible their actions are. It's easy for them to sleep at night just saying, "Well, I didn't see it, so I don't know." And then they, they, they now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the ones who really get under my skin is my. My my friends who are they they say well I'm independent that they get into the political arena they say I'm independent they say I'm independent because they want to be safe but the truth of the matter is they're really for these Republicans you said something just a second ago that just mm, I give the last administration no credit for people talking about race because cops have been killing people since long before that last administration got in office Correct. people chose to ignore they chose their truth is. Well, it ain't happened to me. And I'm going to tell you, the biggest thing I hear is That's when right. people say, well, well, if they weren't out in the streets killing each other, nobody would have a bad perception about them. So wait a minute. i got to pay my taxes to all these different cities so we can fund our, our law enforcement communities within our cities, and yet I'm actually paying them to kill me. Man, that don't make no sense to me. And, and, and the truth mm-hmm. is people see it, people know it, people realize it, but they're not going to move because it doesn't affect them personally. So I Correct. And, and, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of on my BLM tip right now. I'm on my Malcolm X kind of thing right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm it's all right. It's all right. Man. It's sick and tired. Uh, I'm, 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 and, and this goes for anybody who's standing up for the right thing. I don't care if you are – I don't care what your race is. I don't care about color. I, I truly don't. Mm-hmm. I do care about um, the way our system is treating us as a people. Anybody who mm-hmm. is, is – is, is, I'm telling you, that movie, Judas and the Black Messiah, it did something to me. And I watched this movie just a few weeks ago. I've intentionally not really brought it up. But I watched this movie a while back. Why are they afraid? The, the, uh, who was it? Martin Sheen played J. Edgar Hoover in that movie. And, and, and basically his theory, his thought in real life, this is what he really thought, that we will not – and the reason they said Judas and the Black Messiah, he says we – cannot afford to have a black messiah coming out of the black community. He, it wasn't so much that he was afraid of the, uh, of the black Panthers, which he was. He was afraid of, uh, uh, gosh, I'll think of his name in a minute, but he was afraid of the leader of the uh, Illinois chapter of the black Panthers because he did something. He did something that nobody else had really been doing, nobody else had done, and here it is. This is what he did. He got mm-hmm. all of the groups together. <clears throat> You hear what I'm saying? He brought the Puerto Ricans in. Everybody who was a – he brought them in, and he made a coalition, and now he has to be dealt with. Y'all don't get it. See, the truth is that's Mm -hmm. the one – listen, money is great. Capitalism is wonderful for some people as long as they're at the top, as long as they're the biggest beneficiaries of it. When they stop Mm -hmm. being the biggest beneficiaries of capitalism, then – Oh, it's going to be hell to pay. Excuse my French, though. But it's going to be a lot of things going wrong. So so the truth of the matter is, in a story like this, in a narrative like this, it's, it's just plain and simple. I'm going to keep you underfoot because we need you to fund what we're doing. Y'all don't get this. And I'm mm-hmm. tired of this, like, this modern-day slavery that we live in. And, 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 and our country, and, and, and this is what I believe, the truth. Right? We're talking truth here. I believe that our country was built on this, and, and, and our country was built simply. Our, our laws are set up. So that the people in power can do wrong, stay in power, and still make money. Our laws are set up where 
uh, uh, people of color are treated more harshly. The the and here's the crazy thing: Why is it? Did y'all ever think about this? Why is it that white collar crimes are punished uh, not as severe as these low level crimes? Let me tell y'all why. Here it is. I was damn crazy, but here it is. Well, we don't have access really to commit those white collar right. crimes like that. We don't have the know-how. Right. We don't have the positions right. to do it. We could never be a Bernie Madoff. It's not going to happen. not mm-hmm. going to happen. So, yeah, he got hundreds of years in jail, but they knew he was going to die in a few years, and he just died the other day. So the crimes that we can commit, that we are more likely mm-hmm. to commit, oh, my God, we get punished mm-hmm. severely for the same crime. Why is it I go to jail for mm-hmm. 10 years for rock for cocaine? Like a little rock, one rock, kilos, and you get two years. What? Mm-hmm. You got powder. You got the white powder. I can't even get the rock without the powder. So I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, I just believe that. And I'm sorry, I'm going to get off my high horse here. But um, that's why I don't watch movies like Judas and the Black Messiah too often. I kind of go crazy. But but I have a problem with that. So we're talking about truth. So, so, so let's talk about some truth. Let's talk about some truth. Um, uh, 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 let's talk about some truth. The truth is, for me, and, and what can we do about it? Um, BLM. I was not a fan of Black Lives Matter. When it first came out, I really wasn't. Because, again, I, I, I'm telling y'all, there's some ignorance in me, and sometimes it don't want to go away. Is I said, why is it as black people, we got to call everything black? Now, I have been taught, and I have read, the reason why black is on everything is because, here it is, we couldn't do business back in the day, the 1920s, mm-hmm. 1920s without saying that we were a black business. You had to identify mm-hmm. yourself as a black business. Oh, so mm-hmm. now it's a part of our heritage and a part of our culture. But now in today's society, it's seen as something negative. Why you always got to flop that you black? Well, we've been made to do that for all these years, and all of a sudden we're supposed to change. Let's talk about some truths here. So how can we, our little part, how can we do our little part? How can we, how can we help our communities? That's always my question because I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of a, I don't know how. I don't know how to. Start the groups. I don't know how to do it and maintain. I, 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 one of the, I would say, Cedric, if I if I could just jump in, is educating, educating our Explain. our people is educating our people on the justice system, educating our our people on government, um, and how it's run and why it's run the way it's run and how it's been assembled. Yeah. Um. Uh, having our people educate on uh, educated on the Constitution, and you know, and things mm-hmm. in, in Bill of Rights, and and all because see, all those things is, are things that we were educated on when we were younger. Per se, I can say I was. I don't know about y'all's education. We had civics, and and and, uh-huh. and, yeah, we, and I purpose. We so we learned about how government was, how bills were done. The kids nowadays, these millennials, don't know nothing about stuff like that. And so what happens is it takes – so when something like the whole uh, uh, incident with that where black men are being killed and choked and all this happened, they, they don't understand. A lot, of these, a lot of these millennials and younger don't understand that, that the justice system was desi- wasn't designed for us. Mm. Mm. And so what, yeah. what they, so what do they do? They find them, rather than uh, studying and learning the justice system, they, they find themselves uh, doing criminal acts, doing all these different things and getting caught up in the justice system that doesn't work for them. You know, it's this, this whole thing is, so we, it, it goes back to a lot of education. Um, um, and, I, and I remember when I was little, um, we used to go to the barber shop, and that was a big place of education for me, because you know I would sit there and I would listen to these people talk about political issues. They would talk about what was going on in the community, what was going on in the churches, what was going on. Period. You know, and those that stuff don't that that, that con- those conversations don't exist anymore. Uh, yeah, that's, and, and, and they don't. And, and, yeah, and, and your point, Terry, you know, you talk about education, and, you know, I, I think I want to add to that, uh, you know, last year when we had this another, when we were going through a string of of, uh, of murders by, you know, by these police officers, you know, the church uh, that I attend did a rally, and they brought a guy in, oh. and, 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 he, and he said something that resonated with me, 
You know, um, if you look at the education of our children, right, what do we grow up learning? We grow up learning all about slavery and all this other stuff. We learn about how the black man Mm -hmm. for the history of time has been lesser than, right? So, you know, he, Mm -hmm. he spoke on something that resonated with me. Why don't we teach our kids about the success that we've had and how we and how, you know, in the continent of Africa, the greatness that we did, because I think this is where most of it starts. Right. It starts with my mm-hmm. identity of myself. And and Cedric, you pointed something out uh, a long time ago. And, and to this day, it resonates with me. Why is it every time a black man dies at the hands of the cop, it's all over the TV. They're not blurring anything. Right. Out. They're letting everybody see it, you know. I would say it harkens back to what you just talked about. I'm going to kill the biggest one over you so y'all know I can do this and get away from mm-hmm. it, right? What? And, you know, you, you, take, you, you take constantly seeing that type of, you know, just, just, just attacks and murder and just, just, just constantly being fed to you, and then an education system that tells you, well, let's talk about the black people in the history. Well, y'all are always slaves, and y'all, this is, this is what y'all did, but we fought for your, you fought for your slavery, and, and, you know, you were lesser than, and let me tell you how bad it was, but now it's better, you know? So we spend all this time just indoctrinating our kids with a lesser sense of themselves, and then we want to turn around in the world and say, oh, go make something of yourself. Well, we've already destroyed that. we destroyed that desire and that will. You know, so when we talk about education, I think it goes beyond just the facts and the law. It's educating you of who you are and and, and your history Correct. and 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 in your value. That's the real part. You know, if 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 we recognize uh-huh. our value, then we're gonna fight for that value, right? You know, we're not gonna let that cop just go away, and we're gonna we're gonna do whatever it takes to make sure justice is served. And 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 I think. You know that that's that's so near and dear to what we need as a community, and and the more I take a step back and I see these things, and I see how the things that are on media, right? You know, who are the guys who 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 are the representation of black on 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 the TV? It's the athletes. It's the it, it's the it's everybody that you know. It, it's that glam. It's that show, and and then when and, you know, it's just it's just I don't know. It's just it's just tough. You know, when you start seeing this, not just as individual uh-huh. acts, but like a, a system put in place to just, to your point, Cedric, keep everybody in line. Yeah, it, it's funny you say that, that system. Again, I got to I gotta go back to the movie because I'll tell you this movie. Oh, we're going to have to do a real nice comprehensive study on this. But this movie, I go back to one of, another one of the quotes, and it says, Reform is just the mass teaching the mass how to be better slaves. Now, now look. <laughs> I'm not the guy that just, you know, that just harking to say society is just trying to make us slaves. No, no, no. They've given up on just trying to make us slaves. What they're doing now is trying to keep us slaves. See, we, already, we make ourselves slaves, right? So they're just trying to keep us there and keep us in our place. But, 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 again, when I think of that, when I think about what you just said, you know, I get so um, – uh, I get charged up, and not in a negative way because I don't want to – uh, I don't want to go out here and be fighting and that kind of stuff. I will. I I say I I I don't. I love it when people protest. I don't support the looting and burning of buildings, unless of course that's the only way you get your point across. I mean, too many people are dying out here. I got to get your attention. I get it. I still don't support it. But if it happens, you know what? I'm not going to fall off a bridge and just go. The, the looting I never support. I don't support anybody stealing because it, it doesn't do anything. But the point I want to make is this. I'm tired of being taught, and I'm tired of being told, just keep your head down and go on about your business. I remember my parents used to tell me that whenever he, that they would say, well, when I was somewhere and I didn't have any support from anybody, I was by myself, keep your head down and keep it moving. I'm tired of keeping my head down and keeping it moving. I'm tired. It's it's ridiculous. And and then the other side of what, what we got going on in our society, now we got vaccines for coronavirus, and then we got people who just don't want to do it. Truth of the matter is, why don't you want to take it? No, it can't be because your guy lost an election. Why don't people want to take it? It can't be because the vaccine itself was developed and, and, and uh, uh, what, what, who, by who? Oh, it was a black lady. It, it can't be for those reasons. Why aren't people wanting to take it? Why Why do we want to take everything to the extreme to prove our, our, our racist idea, ideological points? Why can't we recognize that we are all people? Who cares what shade we are? We're all homo sapiens. We are all people. 
And if you live here in America, this is the only country you can come to and become an American. You know, if you go to other countries, you can go to France. You won't be a Frenchman. You'll just be a black American living in France. You hear what I'm saying? But when you come to America, you get to be an American. What? What's this? Why are we having such a hard time with that? Our society is crazy right now, and it's driving me crazy. But we're talking truth here, right? Truth is, I'm frustrated and I'm upset. <laughs> I'm just upset. Well, I mean, you, you asked a question, and, and, and the truth of the matter is the reason why we can't get there is that this system wasn't set up to be there, right? And as you know, to your, to your point, when you watch those movies like Judas and the Black Messiah and, you know, uh, I think that Billie Holiday movie, you see a government, right? We're not talking about a bunch of people in white sheets, uh, you know, from you know from the backwoods of, of, of down south. We're talking about the government, the federal government having a, a planned systematic approach to oppress a people. And – and you know, and, you know, and when people talk about, well, Jim Crow happened so long ago. Think about what you just said. I, I understand you, Jim Crow happened a long time ago, but you had a government that condoned mm. the, the 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 devaluation of another human being, and up until recently, here has it had it been? Did it, did it get revoked? And even then, mm-hmm. the, the, there are people who did not want it revoked, and to this day. They still don't. Uh, it, it's it's it, it's amazing to me, right? It is amazing that you know people don't understand. You had a you did not. If you want to talk to me about a bunch of people in white sheets, like a, a handful of people doing crazy, uh, bad acts, that's a different story. But when you have a government system, you know, run by the people in power, run that's supposed to be run, the government's supposed to be some of the best of us, right? And this is what they this is what they decided to do. Then you know. You got to look at the system that that's out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I know we're getting close to the end of the show here today, but but you know, I I I, I I'm struggling um, because you know a lot of the things we do, and I don't want to get too political, but I hate to say it again. I, I don't want to get too political, but I, but I tell you, one of the one of the uh, again, another quote from the movie was, was was a very simple one, and he said in the movie, he said, "War is politics with bloodshed. Politics is war without bloodshed." Our politics is not not just governmental. Our politics is amongst us, the society, and I, and I think the more we recognize that, the better off we're going to be. Truth, if we don't organize and we don't show, if 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 all of us want the same freedoms. And I'm talking all of everybody, no matter which community you're in. If we don't get on the same accord, nothing's going to change. It's going to take too much. Why is it that we have a handful of people in our Senate and in our in our Congress, a handful of people? And and if you do a, a, a basically a survey throughout the, our entire country, the smaller group, the minority of the country. Why they got the most rules benefiting them? Why the most laws benefit them? Because they band together and they stay together. And 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 I, and I think in our society, the truth of the matter is, we have to get on common ground with one another. We have to stay mobile. We have to stay informed. We have to stay active, and we have to to move forward. That's the only way we're going to move anything forward. Because the 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 one truth, and I think all three of us agree on the one truth. This one truth is. There's but one God, and that's who we're trying to serve. And if we put our hats on, put our clothes on right, put our attitudes on right, and we serve Christ, then we're going to be given a great benefit to everybody in this country. Am I right? Yep. That's the truth, though. That's the truth. When, when Terry started out, and when you started out, Jason, that's that one truth that you guys said. And that's what I, I, I'm telling you. I liked it. I like it. I like it. I love it. And, and that is the that's the truth, you know. That is the truth, and and so I tell y'all what I'm gonna ask because Joe Madison asked this on his show. I I'm, I'm, I I I am promoting this show. I'm saying, man, he got a great show. You gotta go check him out. He's a bit radical, but hey, if you can handle that, you can handle the show. The show is great. Um, with that, what can we do? How how can we? Because I don't want to teach kids to 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 talk the way. I mean, I I get really 
I'm very compassionate about this subject matter, so I get a kind of little, a little overzealous when I'm talking about it. How can we teach our young people? Terry, you mentioned something about going to barbershop and things like that. Teach them to hold their hand, take them out here, because we have to start now. Uh, Terry, uh, 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 you remember a few years back we went up to the school and we talked to some young men, and these, some of these young men were were at risk young. Well, they were all at risk young men. Um, well, Terry and I, we, we, we went and we talked to these young men, uh, Jason, and it was the most enlightening experience for me. But I, I, I have to get back into the schools and I have to continue to do this work because I just believe the truths that are playing out in front of us today, they're not true. They're not. It's just, it, it's a lie that's dressed up. They put cologne on it. They put it in some nice clothes. They put it in some high heels, they put perfume, whatever. It's just a dressed up mess. And we have to get back, get back. And, and, and one of the things about my saying on relentless pursuit is that, you know, you may fall. I say this, stumbling, and I got this from Malcolm X, stumbling is not falling. You hear what I'm saying? We may have a hard time, but we can get through it. We can get through anything. Uh, as we get ready to close, Jason, because um, uh, we, we, we got about two more minutes. Um, um, we we just gotta we we gotta keep on moving, okay? So you got any closing remarks you want, uh you want to have, Jason? Yeah, I, I mean, I I think you know to your point, you know, we talk about truth, and this is, you know, we you know we all admit this is a tough time, but to come full circle, right? Um, the truth of God's word is a truth that is uplifting. It's embracing. And it gives you power to make radical changes, right? And, and I think that's the truth that we all have to know, and that's the truth that we all have to understand, you know. So whatever the whatever the truth that the world gives you, and I'm using my air quote for that truth, you know, just know that yeah. there is a there there is a truth that's not my truth, that is not relative, that is absolute, and in that truth there is power, there is grace, there is justice. Right, and that's the truth that I think we all need to seek and find, and 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 help help you know as brothers and sisters as we make that walk, get us back to that truth. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know, I I gotta leave. I'm and I'm gonna read this quote. This is a quote that I got from Malcolm X, and and again, I, I know this show it may not be good on, but since I've been talking about the movie, uh, 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 Judas and the Black Messiah, he said Malcolm X had a quote. He says, um, he says. You show me a capitalist, and I'll show you a bloodsucker. Wrong is wrong no matter who does it or who says it. If you're not ready to die for it, put the word freedom out of your vocabulary. In all our deeds, the proper value and respect for time determines success or failure. Nonviolence is fine as long as it works. We, we got to lean on that one. It says, he's, and, and then he says, I'm for truth no matter who tells it. I'm for justice, no matter who it's for or against. A man who stands for nothing will fall for anything. If you have no critics, you'll likely have no success. These are just some quotes that he put out. And I want to stop at that one. If you have no critics, you'll likely have no success. Man, you know, he is, uh, when I read stuff like this and when when I take this in, it's relevant today, more today, than ever before because of what's playing out. And you guys know what happens. It's always darkest before it goes completely dark. And and, and you know what? The time for for racism and all this inequality, the, I'm telling you, the sun is going down on it. The lights are being turned off. I mean, it is being pushed out of our society. So they're making this, I believe that they're making this last ditch effort, but just like we do at Relentless Pursuit, we won't quit. We want we want to stay behind this. So uh, as we get ready to close, Jason, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to everybody for listening. And uh, just remember, find something you love, chase it, embrace it. And that is your Relentless Pursuit. Thank you for listening in. And we'll be back next Friday at 6.30 Eastern. 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. God bless you, and everybody have a wonderful evening. His love. 
is love. She's the his love never leave me, nor forsake me. His love when haters try to hate or try to break me, I got his love. I'm on a different type of groove uh-huh. I don't do the club cause the devil makes the rules right. I don't curse a storm cause my father told me better You can't never fight a people if you curse with every letter right. And you ain't gotta settle, uh-huh. turn notice to whoever yeah. He made us bold as lions and we tougher than some letter Know the devil wanna spin, his purpose to keep us down But you can repent from sin, let Jesus turn it around So bruh, is it true what they say? Nah. You can be forgiven, cast every sin away nah. If you change within, can Leah be born again? Surrender it to the Lord, let rent Begin. You that gotta right. let's tap on me and salvation uh-huh. is when we win See people gon' doubt your walk with your testimony in him He yeah. cover you from your brim to the bottom of every Tim yeah. The truth ain't in the pudding, it's definitely right in the hem Authentic strength of my condition, no plastic made religion My faith is my assurance, elevating my position Reached through the heavens, took me out of hell's prison that right. Put me in the water, came out yeah. as a Christian Okay, Jesus is authentic, Jesus is authentic, Jesus is authentic Jesus is authentic, yeah. Jesus is authentic, uh. Jesus is authentic. Cardi- Jesus yes. is authentic, God Jesus squad, bro. Authentic. Jesus is authentic. You know yes. my worship all authentic. Yes. If we talking about my body, yeah, that's rented. That's and rented. in the book of Romans, yeah, I'm in it. Get my body as a sacrifice while I'm living. Not kidding, yeah. y'all tripping like a shoe one tight. If you thinking that the squad ain't unified, see we got strong ties. Three safe guys, eyes on Christ like that line. Please rewind. Squad in the building, lock their door on a hater, praising God. Yeah, we down with the outfit. And Omega uh, versus Mega Swag Ultra God won't cross ya nah. If you want anointing You can bet it's gon' cost ya yes, Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby nope. We keep it real, no knockoff Trying to reach the folks That'll try and blow your top off If you don't back off You came for all y'all, all y'all. Uh, Strength in my condition No plastic made religion My faith is my assurance Elevating my position Reached through the heavens Took me out of hell's prison right. Put me in the water Came out yeah. as a Christian Okay, Jesus is authentic Jesus is authentic Jesus is authentic, 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 yeah. Who can take you from the storm, then block the hatred, put a hold on your life, have you stuck in the matrix, updated my status, hashtag authentic, when I told you about the swag, no lie, I missed it, my face in this book, he is the ground salvation, give him an encore praise, I mean a standing ovation, I'm God's creation, pull me out of the basement, my sins cremated, purity replacement, never mind. Me, I'm on my biblical stunt. The devil ain't nothing, just a lyrical punk. Christ lit the torch, now my soul's on fire. Meditating on his word, no Buddha required. About my father business, no need to rehearse. Soon as I die, he allowed me to reverse. My condition is critical, my God's official. With no striped shirt, no need for a whistle. I finish. Strength my condition, no plastic made religion. My faith is my assurance, elevating my position. Reached through the heavens, took me out of hell's prison. Put me in the water. That came out yeah. as a Christian. Okay, Jesus is authentic. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 